Hi, and welcome to Canterbury Cottage. I'm Sherry. I am so excited for today's video because I have teamed up with two of my all-time favorite DIYers, Julie of Julie's Designs and Signs and Teresa of Our Green Acres. These ladies are so creative and so much fun to watch. I literally have watched every single one of their videos, some of them multiple times. Well, recently, the three of us came up with a list of 10 common, easy to find thrift store items. And then we each used those same 10 items in today's DIY projects. As of right now, I have not watched Julie or Teresa's videos, but I can't wait to see what they came up with. Well, if you're ready to see how I used my 10 items, let's get started. Baskets are readily available and super cheap at the thrift store. But instead of using them for home decor and storage, I decided to turn one into a birdhouse. I took off the handle and then I cut a small entrance hole for the birds. I hot glued some jute rope around the opening to make sure that the basket didn't start to come apart. I found a wood round in my stash that fit the basket opening perfectly. I stained it with some antiquing wax, and then I used wood glue and hot glue to secure it in the basket opening. Because I want to use this birdhouse outdoors, I purchased a plastic pot at Dollar General to use for the roof. I gave it a couple coats of green apple spray paint, and then I drilled a hole in the center of the base. I ran an eye bolt through a random lamp part that I had, and then I attached it to the pot using a nut on the inside. I applied construction adhesive to the bottom of the basket, and then I firmly pushed the plastic pot onto the basket. I flipped it over and applied a good amount of hot glue for extra adhesion. For decoration, I hot glued on a metal flower that had broken off of something else. Then I drilled a hole for a bird perch. I whittled down the end of a stick because I wanted a firm fit. I used hot glue to hold it in place, and then I used my miter shears to cut the length to size. As I was preparing to take it outside to hang it in a tree, I decided to add an IOD white transfer to the roof. I also put some Spanish moss inside to make it comfy for the birds. I hung it in the lilac bush just outside my patio door so I can see it, and I sure hope some birds decide to make it their home. Kitchen utensils, especially rusty crusty ones, always remind me of Julie. If you haven't watched any of her thrift haul videos on Facebook or YouTube, you are missing out because she finds the absolute best things. So in honor of Julie, I picked up this slightly rusty vintage potato masher. For this project, I picked up four of the small Dollar Tree crates and I painted them with red chalk paint. I also touched up the paint on the handle of a vintage potato masher because most of the original red paint had worn away. When the paint was dry, I lightly distressed the crates and the handle with 220 grit sandpaper. Then I used super glue to glue two of the small crates together to create two longer crates. I could have skipped this step if I had been able to find the larger Dollar Tree crates. I wonder if they stopped making them. I set the crates on either side of the potato masher and marked where the handle was. Then I drilled holes so that I could use small screws to attach the four boxes together just inside and outside of the potato masher handle. 
I had forgotten to fill the holes where the jute twine handles had been, so I went ahead and did that with a little wood filler. When it was dry, I sanded it smooth and touched up the red paint. I then applied a clear wax to all four crates. To cover up the potato masher and to create a smooth base, I cut a square of cardboard from an old cereal box. I then attached it to the crates using hot glue. You could use this as a decorative piece in your kitchen, or you could use it as a functional piece to organize items that you use every day, like spices or measuring spoons. You could even use it in your bathroom to organize makeup or other small items. For this next project, I was inspired by Teresa's ability to turn any scrap of wood into a beautiful piece of art with a French country flair. So I'll be combining a wood cutting board and wood knife block to create a French country iPad stand. I used liquid sandpaper to clean up both to get rid of all the grease and grime. I lined up the cutting board on the slanted portion of the knife block, and then I drilled two small holes along the bottom of the cutting board. Then I attached the cutting board to the knife block by hammering in brad nails. I used a nail set to push the brad nail below the surface of the cutting board. I then repeated the process using two brad nails to attach the cutting board to the top of the knife block. I cut a piece of molding that I had in my garage to the width of the cutting board. I then attached it to the cutting board both with wood glue and with a couple of the same brad nails. Because the piece of molding had been previously painted, I painted the cutting board with chiffon cream chalk paint to match the molding. After applying two coats of chalk paint, I lightly distressed it with 220 grit sandpaper, and then I applied some IOD transfers from their traditional POTS transfer set. Obviously, if you want to use the cutting board to cut on, you won't want to paint it. However, I was trying to create a stand to hold my iPad while I'm cooking. It is at the perfect angle and it is extremely sturdy. And you can still use it to store your knives if you want to. I have repurposed a variety of clocks on this channel but never one that came in a wood box like this one. I used a heavy duty staple remover to remove the clock portion and then the glass cover just lifted out. Then I measured the width of the wood box and cut a piece of scrap wood to fit inside. I attached the piece of wood just below the clock opening using wood glue and then attaching brad nails on either side of the wood box. I like to drill a little starter hole so my nail doesn't bend and my wood doesn't split when I'm hammering in the nails. I also like to use a nail set so that the nails are not so noticeable. I painted the clock with a couple coats of Dixie Belle's Sawmill Gravy mineral paint. When the paint was dry, I lightly distressed it with 220 grit sandpaper. For adornment, I removed the frame from this piece of floral wall art. I just bent it back and forth until it snapped off. I then attached the floral portion to my clock using a screw in the picture hanger hole and applying super glue to the vase portion. Then I applied a coat of clear wax to protect the paint and I attached two sawtooth hangers on the back so that I could hang it on a wall. At the last minute, because it was looking a little plain to me, I applied an IOD transfer next to the metal flowers. 
I debated whether to reattach the glass clock face or not and decided to leave it off so that I could easily reach in and change out the decor on the little shelf. I love finding different uses for old books, but for this next project, I'm only going to be using the book cover. I found a narrow cardboard box that I wasn't using and I reinforced the bottom of the box with a couple strips of duct tape. Then I cut the sides at an angle like you see on those desk and magazine organizers. Then I applied a quality glue stick to the back of my book cover. I took the book cover and tried to align the spine with the end of my cardboard box. Then I wrapped the book cover around either side of the cardboard box, smoothing out any wrinkles and applying additional glue stick as necessary. I'm really disappointed that I didn't get the book cover on as straight as I would have liked. Still, this makes a great hiding spot for those appliance manuals and flimsy paperback cookbooks. Here's another option for those of you who don't mind removing the pages from an unused book. Use a utility knife to cut through the pages of a thick, tall book. As you can only remove a few pages at a time, this will take a little while. Using scissors, cut away at the paper that is still stuck to the binding. You can also use a sanding block to further smooth down the edges of the paper left behind. Then, using a cardboard box about the same depth as your book, cut your box into the shape of a magazine organizer. I cut a strip of paper from one of the book pages and then used glue stick to adhere it to the front and bottom of my cardboard box. Then I used hot glue on the sides of the box to adhere it both to the back and front cover of the book. Even though I used a flimsy cracker box on this organizer, the hard cover of the book makes it quite sturdy and stable. This makes the perfect little hiding spot for just about anything. Remote controls, magazines, photos, you name it. For just a dollar or less, you can create a versatile storage container that will keep your bookshelves looking neat and attractive. Clear glass jars and vases are readily available and seldom cost more than a dollar or two at my local thrift stores. I decided to turn this glass jar into a tiny terrarium. I stuck some small greenery and flowers into a Dollar Tree moss ball. They are made from styrofoam, so they're perfect for a project like this. As a special touch, Hot glue a Dollar Tree butterfly sticker to one of your flowers. And then push your moss ball into the bottom of your glass jar. Push a little reindeer moss down to the bottom of the jar to surround the moss ball. Wrap some florist wire or other thin wire around the top of your jar a few times and then create a loop so that you can hang your jar. I thought it would be fun to hang my little terrarium jar from an old banana stand, which I cleaned up really well with some liquid sandpaper. As further embellishment, I rolled up an Emily Dickinson poem and tied it with twine, and then tied it to my glass jar. I think this is a fun way to decorate your banana stand when you're out of bananas. I also think this little jar would look cute just sitting on tiered trays. It would also make a sweet gift with a personalized note or poem attached. Because my thrift stores have frames in all shapes and sizes, I almost never buy new ones. I picked this large one up because of the huge mat inside. 
I removed the backing, which was basically a large piece of foam board held in place with tape and a lot of staples. I decided to apply some IOD floral transfers to the large mat. I love the vintage appeal of the Ode to Henry Fletcher transfers. I trimmed around each of the four images, and then I planned the arrangement on the mat. I taped the images down with painter's tape to hold it in place while I used the IOD tool to transfer the image onto the mat. I trimmed away all of the transfer that covered the picture opening in the center of the mat. I printed out this Matisse quote on a large piece of cardstock to put in the center of the mat. The brown frame looked a little too modern for my taste, and so I gave it a couple coats of black chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I lightly distressed the edges with fine grit sandpaper, and then I applied a coat of clear wax. I returned the foam board to the frame and carefully pressed down all of the staples to hold it in place. Then I applied some brown paper tape to the edges over the staples to give the back a cleaner look. What do you guys think of this idea of using IOD transfers on a picture mat? When I started making this, I had planned on selling it in my booth, but I am really loving it. I put it up in the guest bathroom, and I think it's going to stay there. For my wood item, I chose one of those vintage jewelry boxes that looks like a small chest of drawers. Mine was a music box, but unfortunately, it was broken. To begin, I removed all the jewelry dividers and the velvety lining from the top and from the drawer. I painted the jewelry box inside and out with two coats of Waverly Mineral chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I lightly distressed the edges using fine grit sandpaper. At this point, I abandoned my original plan of putting live plants in the top and in the drawer, realizing that neither one was deep enough. So I knocked out the thin plywood separating the top from the drawer, and I removed the back from the drawer because the drawer had been made smaller to accommodate the music box. I used a couple small screws to attach the drawer to the bottom of the jewelry box so the drawer would no longer open. Then I applied a coat of clear wax all over the jewelry box inside and out. I put my plant in a cheap plastic tub that fit perfectly inside the jewelry box, and then I covered the dirt with some sheet moss. I also cut a stick down to keep the lid partially propped open because I didn't want it completely opened or completely closed. If you're wondering why I painted over the little handles, it's because they were not screwed in. So if I had tried to remove them, I likely would have broken them. And besides, I don't mind the look of painted handles. I think this turned out to be a really cute planter, and I love the addition of the little bunny rabbit. I had originally planned on upcycling some ceramic canisters this week, and I picked up these strawberry ones for $3.99 at Goodwill. But when I did a search for them, I discovered that they are somewhat valuable, so I decided to leave them alone. So instead, I'll be upcycling these three tin canisters that I picked up at the Habitat Restore. I spray painted the cans and lids first with Zenser Primer and then with a coat of regular white spray paint. When the paint was fully dry, I applied a thin coat of Mod Podge to the front of each can. Then I applied this pretty floral design that I had cut from napkins that I ordered from Amazon. Carefully smooth out any wrinkles with your fingers and with your paintbrush. 
Then carefully apply another coat of Mod Podge over the top of the napkin. I decided to use the napkin border around the edge of the lids. If you are working with two or three ply napkins, make sure that you remove the back layers and are working with the top layer only. If you're going to replicate this project, pay attention to how the lids fit on the canisters. Mine are a little snugger than I would like. If you want, you can add old cabinet knobs to the canisters simply by drilling a hole in the center of each lid. For the baking pan project, I decided to use three mini loaf pans that I picked up for 49 cents each. I took an old belt that my husband didn't want anymore and cut the ends off. Then I folded and clipped it in half. I marked six inches down from the clip on both pieces of belt, and then I hot glued the sides of one of the mini loaf pans to the belt at those marks. To make sure that the pan stayed put, I drilled a hole through the belt and through the side of the pan and inserted a small screw. I then bent the tip of the screw down on the inside of the pan. I sealed the end of the belt with a little hot glue to make sure that it didn't come unraveled. And I attached the other two pans in the same manner as I had the first one. To dress up the pans, I used super glue to attach one of the laser wood cutouts from Dollar Tree to each of the pans. Have you seen these little laser cutouts? They are so cute. They have birds and butterflies and flowers. I went with the leaves for my bread pans. How cute would this be hanging in a kitchen window with herbs growing in the little pans? Well, I hope you enjoyed watching today's video at least half as much as I did making it. And don't forget to head over to Julie and Teresa's channels to see how they upcycled the same 10 items. I'll have their videos linked in the description box below. Just click on this video's title to open up the description box. And also, please check out the Canterbury Cottage Facebook group page because I have an idea for a new video series but I need your help. Well, that's all for today. As always, thank you so very, very much for watching, and I hope to see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye for now.